find them in connection with the two lower vehicles. The fire of mine, when blended with the internal fires, is the basis of life in the fourth kingdom, and united they control partially now and later entirely, the lower threefold man or the personality, this control lasts up to the time of the first initiation. The fire of spirit finally, when blended with the two other fires, which blending commences in man at the first initiation, forms a basis of spiritual life or existence. As evolution proceeds in the fifth or spiritual kingdom, these three fires blaze forth simultaneously, producing perfected consciousness. This blaze results in the final. 52 ATREATISONCOSMICFIRE Purification of matter and its consequent adequacy, as a close of manifestation it brings about eventually the destruction of the form and its dissolution, and the termination of existence is understood on the lower planes. In terms of Buddhistic theology it produces annihilation. This involves, not loss of identity, but the cessation of objectivity and the escape of spirit, plus mind, to its cosmic center. It has its analogy in the initiation at which the adept stands free from the limitations of matter in the three worlds. The internal fires of the system, of the planet, and of man are threefold. 1. 2. Interior fire at the center of the sphere, those inner furnaces which produce warmth. This is radiant fire. Radiatory fire. This type of fire might be expressed in terms of physical plane electricity, of light rays, and of etheric energy. This is active fire. 3. Essential fire, or the fire elementals who are themselves the essence of fire. They are mainly divided into two groups. A. B. Fire devas or evolutionary entities. Fire elementals or involutionary entities. Later we will elaborate on this when we consider the fire of mind and deal with the nature of the thought elementals. All these elementals and devas are under the control of the fire lord, Agni. When considering him and his kingdom the subject can be taken up at greater length. We might here point out. However, that our first two statements concerning the internal fires, express the effect that the fire entities have upon their environment. Heat and radiation are other terms which might be applied in this sense. Each of these effects produces a INTROGUCTORYMARKS 53 Different class of phenomena. Latent fire causes the active growth of that in which it is embedded and causes that upward pushing which brings into manifestation all that is found in the kingdoms of nature. Radiatory fire causes the continued growth of that which has progressed, under the influence of latent fire, to a point receptive of the radiatory. Let us tabulate it thus. Systemic or macrocosmic, the solar logos are the grand man of the heavens. Latent or interior fire produces the internal heat which makes the solar system productive of all forms of life. It is the inherent warmth that causes all fertilization, whether human, animal, or vegetable. Active or radiatory fire retains in life and causes the evolution of all that has evolved into objectivity by means of latent fire. Planetary, or the heavenly men. What is laid down and then the system, as a whole, can be predicated of all planets which in their nature reflect the sun, their elder brother. 
human, or the microcosmic man. Human-laden fire. The heat interior of the human frame causes production of other forms of life, such as one, two, three. The physical body cells. Organisms nourished by the latent heat. The reproduction of itself in other human forms, the basis of the sex function. Human radiatory, or active fire, is a factor as yet but little comprehended. It relates to the health aura and to that radiation from the etheric which makes a man a healer, and able to transmit active heat. It is necessary to differentiate between this radiation from the etheric, which is a radiation of prana, and magnetism, which is an emanation from a subtler body, usually the astral, and has to do with the manifestation of 54 ATREATISCONCOSMICFIRE, the divine flame within the material sheet. The divine flame is formed on the second plane, the monotic, and magnetism, which is a method of demonstrating radiatory fire, is therefore felt paramountly on the fourth and sixth planes, or through the Buddhic and astral vehicles. These are, as we know, closely allied to the second plane. This distinction is of importance and should be carefully recognized. Having, therefore, made the above statement, we can proceed to take up somewhat in greater detail the interior fires of the systems, microcosmic and macrocosmic. Section 1. Division A. T-H-E-I-N-T-E-R-N-A-L-F-I-R-E-S-O-F-T-H-E-S-H-E-A-T-H-S. 1. The Three Channels. 11. Fire Elementals and Devas. I. The Three Channels for the Fire. From the very use of the term, sheep, it will be noted that we are considering those fires which manifest through the medium of those externalities, of those veils of substance which hide and conceal the inner reality. We shall not here take up the subject of the sheets on the higher planes, but simply deal with the fires that animate the three lower vehicles, the physical body in its two divisions, etheric and dense, the emotional or astral body, and the mental sheet. It is frequently overlooked by the casual student that both the astral and the mental bodies are material, and just as material in their own way, as is the dense physical body, and also that the substance of which they are composed is animated by a triple fire, as is the physical. In the physical body we have the fires of the lower nature, the animal plane, centralized at the base of the spine. They are situated at a spot which stands in relation to the physical body is the physical sun to the solar system. This central point of heat radiates in all directions, using the spinal column as its main artery, but working in close connection with certain central ganglia, wherever located, and having a special association with the spleen. 55. Chart I on page 56. T H E I N T E R N A L F I R E S. 57. In the etheric body, which is an exact replica of its denser counterpart, we have the organ of active or radiatory fire, and, as is well known, the vehicle of prana. Its function is to store up the rays of radiatory light and heat which are secured from the sun, and to transmit them, via the spleen, to all parts of the physical body. Hence in the future it will come to be recognized that the spine and the spleen are of the utmost importance to the physical well-being of man, 
and that when the spinal column is really adjusted and aligned, and when the spleen is free from congestion and in a healthy condition, there will be little trouble in the dense physical body. When the physical furnace burns brightly and when the fuel of the body frantic rays is adequately assimilated, the human brain will function as desired. The subject is a blending of these two fires, which is complete in a normal and healthy person, should engross the attention of the modern physician. He will then concern himself with the removal of nerve congestion or material congestion, so as to leave a free channel for the inner warmth. This blending, which is now a natural and usual growth in every human being, was one of the signs of attainment or of initiation in an earlier solar system. Just as initiation and liberation are marked in this solar system by the blending of the fires of the body, of the mind and of the spirit, so in an earlier cycle attainment is marked by the blending of the latent fires of matter with the radiatory or active fires, and then their union with the fires of mind. In the earlier period the effects and manifestation of the divine flame were so remote and deeply hidden as to be scarcely recognizable, though dimly there. Its correspondence can be seen in the animal kingdom, in which instinct holds the intuition and latency. 58. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E -E on cosmic fire. And the spirit dimly overshadows. Yet all is part of a divine whole. The subject of the radiatory heat of the macrocosmic and microcosmic systems will be dealt with in detail in a later subdivision. Here we will only deal with the latent interior fire of the A. Sun P. Planet Circa Man P. Atom we must remember that in both the astral and the mental sheets there exist the counterparts of the centers as found in the physical body. These centers concern matter and its evolution. One fundamental statement can be laid down anent the internal fires of all these four sun, planet, man, and atom. There exists in the sun, in the planet, in man, and in the atom, a central point of heat, or if I might use so limiting and inappropriate a term, a central cavern of fire, or nucleus of heat, and this central nucleus reaches the bounds of its sphere of influence, its ring pass not by means of a threefold channel. 17a. The sun within the sun, right at its very heart, is a sea of fire or heat, but not a sea of flame. Herein may lie a distinction that perhaps will convey no meaning to some. It is the center of the sphere, and the point of fiercest internal burning, that has little relation to the flames or burning gases whatever terms you care. 17 inches the divine essence that, pervading the entire universe of millions of solar systems, is caught up by our sun and cast out in a manifested form to the utmost boundaries of our solar system, so that this manifested essence may be the basic soil of the growth, preservation and destruction of our world, that divine essence is simple. Natum of our yogic philosophy and that Natum or OM subsequently manifests itself as seven streams. The unmanifested is manifested by or born by the subsequent ramifications. These streams are the seven vowels or seven notes. These seven vowels and notes must have special correlations with the seven Vedic meters, since in the Vishnu Purana, Karasara describes the Vedic meters as the courses of the solar essence. Some thoughts on the Gita, P. 74, T H E I N T E R N A L F I R E S. 59, T 
to use that are generally understood to exist whenever the sun is considered. It 